Good morning and welcome to St. Bartholomew's Sunday Liturgy. Today we mark the fourth Sunday after Pentecost or the readings of proper eight. I invite you to sit in silence and recall the presence of Christ. on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer or may be found in your PDF file on the website at saintbart.org. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me for the Gloria found on page 356 or in your PDF file. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. 
Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priest and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen, now to this word I speak in your hearing, and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4 and 15 through 18. It will be read in unison and can be found in your prayer book or on your PDF. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly the Lord is our ruler. The Holy One of Israel is our King. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments and righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one with whom obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves to sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted and that you, having been set from, free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did then get from then of things which now you are ashamed? The end of things 
is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God's eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. stand as you are able for the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will re receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, None of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Oh, that's a short gospel, isn't it? But it's a powerful one. In this gospel, we hear Jesus' words to the apostles, to the disciples that simply reminds them a cold cup of water given to a little one will get you the reward of eternal life. A cup of cold water. It's that simple. It's that simple to embody Jesus, to be the Christ's hands and feet in this world, and simply offer to another person what God has already given to us, a simple cup of cold water. A cup of cold water that will refresh, that will offer hydration and new life. A cup of water that's cold and crisp that offers cleanliness, a cleansing. And most importantly, offers that little one a sense of hope, a sense of They've been seen, a sense of engagement. And so it was many, many years ago. Uh, it, was, it was a Wednesday night, and I was running around the mom taxi. Anybody can relate to the mom taxi? And so I had Bridget that needed to go to band practice and Casey that needed to go to a rehearsal for a theater production she was in, and they're opposite, on opposite sides of town, and so I'm running back and forth um, outside of Atlanta, and so nothing happens quickly traffic-wise in Atlanta. And I dropped Bridget off, and we were heading across town to drop Casey off. And all of a sudden, from the back seat, Casey said, Mom, we need to go to Chick-fil-A. I'm like, Casey, you just ate. Mom, we need to go to Chick-fil-A right now. 
And so luckily there was a Chick-fil-A right there on the corner. She probably had seen it before I did. And we drove in and I said, what do you want? And so she said, I want a number two and a chocolate milkshake and a Coke. And I'm like, Casey, you never take a number two. Mom, I need a number two. And so mom being very, very obedient to her, t her teenagers, I ordered a number two with a Coke and a milkshake. And so I give it to her, and she goes, we need to go back around the corner, Mom. And I'm like, Casey, we're going to be late. Mom, it's really important. It's really important. And so I got out in traffic, and I turned around the corner, and lo and behold, on the right side of the street was a homeless man. I didn't see him. I didn't see him the first time we passed by there, but she saw him. We pulled over, and Casey got out of the van, went up to this homeless man with his Chick-fil-A meal and his milkshake. And she smiled at him and she handed it to him. And then she gave her this big, huge hug. I got back in the car and said, okay, now we can go to rehearsal. My daughter of, I think maybe she was 12, taught me a lesson that night, one of generosity one of awareness to see something that I hadn't seen because I was so busy racing around. I was so occupied in my own life and what I needed to do for them. I totally missed a homeless, hungry man on the side of the road. And it was just a simple gift of a Chick-fil-A meal, a smile, and a hug that I'm sure brought that man great joy that night. It has brought me great joy all these years later. And we're talking 16 years now. And so it's important. It's Im so important to see people around us, to see those little ones, to see those people that we don't normally pay attention to. And to offer them something, it doesn't have to be huge. We, we all think, you know, we have to commit our whole life to this. And today's gospel just reminds us, it's not our whole life. It's just a simple cup of cold water can change a person's life. It can remind somebody that they are seen, that they matter, that their life has some worth. That's what it means to be a gospel preacher. That's what it means to embody the, the, the theology of Christ in our lives. That's what it means to be the hands and feet of the anointed Christ. As simple as reaching out with a cup of water to give somebody hope and grace and nourishment. continues with the words of our faith found in the Nicene Creed on page 358 in the prayer book or in your PDF file. Please stand as you are able. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people this morning are Form 3, found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your PDF file. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of the word and sacrament. We pray for all who govern and uphold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetually shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Typically, we go on to the exchange of peace, uh, but for those who have worshipped with us at the 1130 liturgy, our family contemporary liturgy, we add an extra prayer there. And there's a story behind this extra little prayer. And so about two years ago, um, Natalie, one of our, our youngsters here in the church, came to me with her mom and, had, and asked me a very important question. And she said, before we do the exchange of peace, why don't we thank God for the peace that he's given us? Because isn't that what we're doing? We're sharing God's peace with each other? And so I said, yes, that's exactly what we're doing. And so that day, Natalie and I sat down and we wrote th this prayer and so I have added it in because I feel that all of us need an extra little piece in our lives. And so this prayer came 
from Natalie's heart. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we give thanks for your peaceful presence in our lives, and we ask you to be present in our hearts as we share your peace with those around us. I invite you to share a sign of peace with those around you immediately and to send a text to those who may be far off. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you. All right, kiddos, come on down. Whew. All right, here we go. Mother Nan's treasure trove. There's... Who do we have this week? This one's from Lillian. Lillian sends a little stuffed kitty. It looks like a little bean bag kitty, just like what I've got here, right? All right, so we got to preach on the kitty. And so the kitty is laying down on, I'm gonna say it's a her belly, okay? And so the kitty's laying on her belly, just resting, and her little paws are reaching out. And isn't that exactly what we've heard in Scripture over and over and over again? When somebody has been hurt or they're sick, they reach out to Jesus in the hope that Jesus is going to heal them. How many healing stories have we heard in Scripture in the Bible? A couple years ago, we did a whole church-wide Sunday school program on the healings. Do any of you remember when we did uh, church-wide on the miracles and the adults talked about the same miracle that the teenagers and the kids talked about? Remember all those? And so this, this particular one reminds me of, of the healing of the woman of hemorrhages. Remember that woman? She's the one who was, was sick and bleeding for 12 years, and she had spent all her money on doctors and medicine, and she was just getting worse. And so she meets Jesus in the midst of a crowd of hundreds of people, and she manages to fall on her knees and reach forward, and she simply touches the fringe of his cloak, the very, very tippy top bottom of his cloak. And she is healed in that moment because she had such faith that simply by reaching out to Jesus and by touching the hem of his cloak, she would be healed. And it's such a powerful moment that not only is she healed, but Jesus stops and says, who touched me? Who touched me? And the disciples look at him, remember this? And the disciples look at him and say, well, Jesus, there's people, there's people all around you. Obviously, somebody touched you, dude. And he goes, no, someone touched me. Someone was healed around me. I felt it. And what he was saying is he felt her faith. He felt her courage to reach out. A woman in that day didn't touch a man's cloak. He, they didn't do that. That was really, really not good things to do. But she had the courage and the faith to reach out and touch him 
so that she could be healed. And so this little kitty to me looks like a kitty version of that healing. And so although Jesus isn't with us in bodily form and we can't just simply reach out and touch him, we can certainly get on our knees and reach out to him with our hearts and let him know what's on our minds and, and share with him all our fears and our wounds and people that have hurt us and mistakes that we've made and problems that we're having. And we can definitely reach out and ask him to come in and help us and heal us, just like this kitty is reaching out. We reach out to Jesus. I love you. I miss you all so much. You take care, be good, and enjoy your summer. We'll see you next week. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. Our liturgy continues with Eucharistic Prayer C, beginning on page 369 of the Book of Common Prayer, or may be found in your PDF file. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through the prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law and to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with the prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending words. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit 
to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he, before he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his son. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, and Jacob and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only, and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. the gifts of God for the people of God. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, with the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ, I proclaim, I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen.
Our liturgy continues with a post-communion prayer found on page 366 of the Book of Common Prayer or in your PDF file. Please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who is human and divine, who is of heaven and also of earth, lift up your hearts and lift up your lives to God. Through the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and those you love here on earth and in heaven, today and always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. 